Well, hello, everyone. We've got a massive cicada season going on where I live, and that's in Australia, and our summertime is when you guys are probably having winter. We're reversed to the rest of the world. And I collected a few cicadas on my morning walk this morning, and I'm going to show you some of these different cicadas. I'm also going to try and work out how to sex these things, and that's still a bit of a mystery to me. Cookie monsters with me, because I think the cicadas like to sit on his fur. There you go, I told you they like Cookie Monster. Actually, did a hatching video of a cicada coming out of their shell on this Cookie Monster. I'm not sure if that's going to be up before this or after this video. But um, something about Cookie Monster makes these guys quite placid. It's always dangerous working with insects and animals. Let me just grab one of these guys. These are safe to handle. And let's have a closer look. Okay, this one, well, some people call it the Red Eyed Cicada. I call them Black Princes. I dare say. Depending on where you are, you'll have a different name for it. Where I live, this is a very common cicada. And um, it's interesting, I think I've said this in another video, it's one of the very few things which is black and an insect in Australia that you can pick up. Generally, when you see something black, it means it's going to be dangerous, it can kill you. And that goes for spiders and snakes as well. And it's crawling up my arm. Underneath cicadas, there's a feeding tube here. I spoke about that in another video as well, and I was not that confident on sexing cicadas. Cicadas have got six legs. I don't know if you can see, but one of them is missing on this guy. And he was on the ground. Like I said, I picked him up and walked, walked this morning, and I would have assumed that a bird has come along and tried to have him as a meal. And he's escaped, and he's lost a leg in the escape. And that seems to be fairly common. I see a lot of cicadas with either a missing wing or a missing leg, and they tend to have survived a bird attack. Well, I'll just put him back on the Cookie Monster, see how calm they are when they're on that furry critter. It's amazing. And while we're talking about birds and birds coming in and eating cicadas, this is what you'll often see. And this is quite a common sight in cicada season. There, the back end of that cicada has been basically eaten away. The bird's beaks are very sharp. They can chew off that meaty abdomen area of the cicada. And um, sometimes the cicada will live on without this back piece. I don't know it's a true name because I'm not an entomologist but um, that's a very very common sight and I'd say that was only that only happened this morning this guy is still like he can still move in a sense that he hasn't gone all stiff um, but it's quite sad but then again the birds are getting their feed so the death of one thing is the life for another I'm looking at you bud you know some people probably see these a bit scary but once you have a good close look at them they're actually very beautiful insects um, I've always liked these. As a child, I used to love collecting these. And even as an adult, I've got a huge fascination for them. Cicadas come out of shells like this. And if it's a big cicada season, you will literally see thousands of these around on trees and fences and things. And this transformation happens generally overnight. Uh, the grub comes up out of the ground after being down on the ground for many, many years. And then there's this amazing transformation as a cicada emerges from this shell. And then it has a few weeks of life as a winged cicada. And in that time, it has to get very busy. It's got to get some food, and it's also got to mate, because it's got to continue the life cycle over again. Well, let me get another cicada out. This one I would call a green grocer. It's actually a fair bit bigger than the Black Prince's there. And he's having a lovely walk around. He's just inspecting what the Cookie Monster's all about. Having a bit of a spring clean on the face there. And I've got a funny feeling this is a male, and I will show you why. Well, I can hear the cicadas outside. Let's take a look at this green gorosa. And I've got a very strong feeling this is a male. And if we look underneath, I hope I'm right here. I can see drums on my thumbs up. And the back abdomen, abdomen area is a different shape. It looks like that. I mean, I'm, I've struggled at the best of times. I always just look for the drums. And the best way, if you stroke them here, sometimes I'll make a, a chirping sound. But he's a bit stage fright at the moment, this guy. And I'm hoping that's a female. Oh, you'll crucify me if I'm wrong. It, uh, I can't see any drums. And there's a totally different shape to the back end of the cicada. I'll tell you what, he is a lovely specimen. He's big, he's green. And when he's up in a tree with green leaves, he's very hard to spot. That green one loves to go for flights in the garage here. He's probably dying to get outside of his buddies. He can hear them singing away. Well, these are my next two. And these two seem to be in some sort of love entangle entanglement here. Let me try and separate them and we'll take a closer look. 
Okay, this sprightly chap is a what I'm calling a yellow Monday. He really does love going for a crawl here. I don't know how I'm going to keep him in focus if he's doing this on me. And he'll crawl right up the camera lens. Whoa! Just looking underneath here, you know, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still not certain if this is male or female or whatever. If I've got to try and make him make a sound. It's just too hard for me to tell. And if I knew, well then I could possibly be called an entomologist, but I'm not one of those. He's coming for camera again. Whoa! I mean, the very beautiful thing about cicadas is just grow Oh, that's a male. <laughs> Finally worked it out. Um, is their translucent wings. They are just absolutely beautiful. And when they come out of their shell, it's just beautiful to watch them get pumped up. It happens, well, it takes a little bit of time to happen. But it's something that you should go and see in life. Just get out in the morning when cicada season's on and take a look at one coming out of their shell. This guy is an absolute goer and it's a male. We heard it make a noise. Come here. Let's have a look underneath. Oh, yes, there's drums there. And it looks like the green one's taking a flight and he's on my pants. <laughs> Starting to get out of control here. You making noises? You're a male, aren't you? Go for it. Yeah, the trick to make them make the noise, if you just stroke their... There we are. He loves me. There we go. He's not camera shy at all, is he? Well, I'll put that frisky um, yellow Monday on the Cookie Monster. And let's take a look at our next specimen here. This is an absolute stunner. I don't find many of these around at all. I think this is a flowery baker. And why they're called that, I'm hoping it's a flowery baker, is because it looks like they've got a dusting of flour. Well, I'm hoping that's what, what it is. <laughs> I'm just making this up, actually, as I go along. Um, but this is absolutely beautiful. And funny, I used to... I think I used to call these tortoise shells. Um, but he is beautiful. Or maybe it's a she. Haven't looked yet. And there's a close look at the head and look at the patterns going on there. Just beautiful. Well, I can tell you that yellow guy there, he's very frisky. He's always on the move. He's chirping sounds. He's chasing females. He's going for it. Watch out, girls. Mr. Yellow is in town. Whoa. Well, i got to laugh. My yellow friend has just taken off. It must have been too much room having all these other cicadas around. He escaped out of the garage and he's now living outside in the free air. What's really beautiful about this flowery baker is, if I look underneath, there's this fantastic colour underneath there. Uh, male, I'm hoping. <laughs> I'll be corrected, I'm sure. But look at that, just beautiful. And you know what? This could be an absolute record bumper year for cicadas where I live, and that's part of their survival strategy is that they basically pump out in big numbers, and then there's so many of them that even if the birds do take a large number of them, there's plenty more to continue on this species. And you know what, you look at this cicada here and you think it's fantastically camouflaged. You put that up on, onto many trees in Australia and you would never see this guy. And that's part of their strategy for surviving as well. And some people say the males make the sound uh, as another thing to confuse birds. I'm not quite sure on exactly what the sound of the male does, apart from, you know, attracting the female. But, um, I mean, when you get a real big hit of them it's super noisy and it can be quite disorientating at the best of times oh yes they're still loving the cookie monster here and on a big big cicada year i could go outside and you go to a gum tree and you'd look up on the gum tree and imagine a cookie monster was a tree just for a moment and you look up the trunk of the tree and you just see like patches of black and that patches of black like to be all black would be cicadas and if i see that this year i'll try and get some video of it to show you it's a little bit difficult to see because it's usually so well camouflaged but it's worthwhile seeing when cicadas are on manic proportions. Just looking at this cicada here, it's one of the black princes or red-eyed cicadas that I showed earlier. It's one with the missing leg, but it's also got some panel damage. You can see a dent in the top of his armour there. See that there, just where my tweezers are? Well, I hope you liked looking at my cicadas. There's one part of their life cycle that I've never seen, and that's when, after they mate, the, the female lays eggs. And then there's basically like a little nymph, like a little baby cicada without wings that goes and burrows into the ground and ends up being underground for many, many years. I've never seen that part of the life cycle and um, maybe I've got to keep a bigger, well, a much closer eye out in the ground if I see one of these nymphs uh, before it burrows underground. Maybe you've seen it, maybe you've got video of it, I'd love to see it. Anyway, I better put these cicadas where they belong, that's outside. Time for some freedom, there you go, my little friend. Wow, look at that camouflage. You can barely see him on that tree. Many people say it's not easy being green. 
He's got his freedom now. I'd hate you to be all alone. There's a cousin to go with you. Don't feel so lonely there. I've got a friend for you. And I really hope you've enjoyed this video of my cicadas. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.